am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I, I promise him I serve him till I die. And I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I, I promise him I'll serve him till I die. And I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for allowing us to be here once again. And we ask that you would open up your word to us this evening, Master. We're praying for traveling grace to those that are still making it this way, Father God. Bring them here safe and sound. Father God, we pray that the word on this evening, Father God, will prick someone's heart, Father. That, uh, they'll come ask him, what must I do to be saved, Master? Even those that are online, that they will be able to hear the word from the Lord, Father God. And it just gives them a hunger and a thirst yes. to even to want to know your word and to, yes. uh, to learn of your word even the more, Father God. So, Father, we're praying for all. Now, Master, right now, we're praying for the different things that's going on, on in this world, Father yes. God, with the uh, many lives that's been lost with the hotel collapse, Father. And oh, I know they're still God. trying to find uh, bodies with that. We're praying, Father God, praying, Father, that... that um, Keep them safe. Those that are uh, trying to find the bodies, keep them safe, Father God. We're praying, Master. We're just praying for your influence over the whole entire thing. Father, the senseless murder on yesterday of the, uh, the GISD employee, farm employee, Father God, we're praying for comfort for that family, Master, that you continue to comfort and keep them, Master. Let them know that you don't make mistakes, Father God. Oh, God, we're just praying for this country, for the senseless shootings uh, on the highway, Father God. That, uh, young man that got shot yesterday is just driving on the highway with his dad. Father God, it's just so many different things. This violence is happening all over the place. Uh, but we know you're in control, Father God. We know you're in control. And Master, we just want to say thank you for this opportunity once again. Speak to your people through this Bible study. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, y'all. So we're going to go into 1 Kings. We just finished up 2 Samuel 24 on last week. And now we're going to move into uh, 1 Kings. And I'm just going to read a little bit at the beginning just to kind of give us a segue as we get ready to start uh, in this book. The book of 1 Kings, uh, originally it was one book. 1 and 2 Kings was one book. Uh, the purpose of the book was to contrast the lives of those who live for God and those who refuse to do so through the history of the kings of Israel and Judah. So we're going to see a split in the kingdom later on in this in this book. The author is unknown, possibly Jeremiah or a group of prophets. The original audience is the, are the people of Israel. The setting, the once great nation of Israel turned into a land divided, not only physically, but also spiritually. Uh, the key people are David, Solomon, Rehoboam, Jeroboam, Elijah, Ahab, and Jezebel. Uh, it says, then this is just the reading that I have right here. It says, I don't care what anyone says, I'm going, I'm going to do it. The boy yells at his mother as he storms out of the house. This is a familiar scene in our society. The words change, but the essential message is the same. A person is not open to advice because his or her mind is closed. Some advice may be sought, but it is heeded only if it reinforces the decision already made or is an easier path to take. It is human nature to reject help and to do things our way. A much wiser approach is to seek, hear, and heed the advice of good counselors. Solomon, the world's wisest man, urges this in Proverbs. How ironic that his son and successor, Rehoboam, listened instead to foolish advice with devastating results. At Rehoboam's inauguration, he was petitioned by the people to be a kind and generous ruler, the older men counseled him to be a servant and give them a favorable answer. But Rehoboam agreed to the cruel advice of his peers who urged him to be harsh. As a result, Rehoboam split the kingdom. Learn from Rehoboam's mistake. Commit yourself to seeking 
and following wise counsel. Amen. As we get ready to go into chapter 1, 1 Kings, uh, this we're going to find out when Solomon is anointed king, he eliminates all opposition to the throne, builds the temple, establishes a strong army, and becomes the richest and wisest king in the history of Israel. But his pagan wives lead him into idolatry, and as a result, he leads the nation into a spiritual decline. No matter what position in life we attain, we are always ripe for a downfall and must never let our guard down against sin and temptation. The first section of the uh, first chapter is titled, Solomon Becomes King. And it's also subtitled as David in His Old Age. And I'll read uh, 1 through, let's see, I'll read 1 through 6, 1 through 6. King David was now very old. And no matter how many blankets covered him, he could not keep warm. So his advisors told him, Let us find a young virgin to wait on you and look after you, my lord. She will lie in your arms and keep you warm. So they searched throughout the land of Israel for a beautiful girl, and they found Abishag from Shunem and brought her to the king. The girl was very beautiful, and she looked after the king and took care of him. But the king had no sexual relationships with her. And the next part is titled, Adonijah Claims the Throne. Adonijah is David's other son. About that time, David's son, Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, began boasting, I will make myself king. So he provided himself with chariots and charioteers and recruited 50 men to run in front of him. Now his father, King David, had never disciplined him in any time, even by asking, why are you doing that? Adonijah had been born next after Absalom, and he was very handsome. All right, so we, section right here, we see um, greed, or uh, we see somebody want, wants you to have their own way. Not consulting God, not waiting in line, just want to have their way and take over the kingdom. And we see more issues with David's family. David had all kinds of family feud and issues, and uh, son, one son raped uh, his daughter, the other son was trying to kill David, all kinds of just stuff going on. Well, now we see it's continuing to happen. Um, just look at it, David being a very old man, and the people were still trying to look out for him. They tried to find him someone to help comfort him. So they tried to look for a young lady uh, to just help comfort him and take care of him. Um, but while this is going on, they should have been preparing, uh, let me say this, when you leave things unplanned uh, and there's no plan for someone to take over as king or other plans in place and all kinds of things go awry. So instead of having things in place where we already knew Solomon was going to take uh, over and everybody else knew it, then there would have been less problems. But now you leave things undone. That's here, that's also in our own very lives. You know, if we leave things undone and not communicate it right, just like somebody having a men's program, and, and it's not communicated, you've got some things that happen. So that thank God for uh, allowing this to be right here. But when, we, when things are not communicated fully, then you're going to have issues. So now we're going to see issues because of lack of communication and other issues, but one of them is lack of communication. All right, anybody else want to have anything? Yeah, I want to see it, but... Uh, uh, uh. What, what's the boy's name? Uh, 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 Adonijah. Adonijah. He has the same spirit of his brother Absalom. Mm -hmm. The same spirit. Same baby. And uh, that's what a lot of people look at today. I'm going to say like, uh, I'm going to say like my cousin, uh, uh, my little cousin, uh, that boy name. The one you talk, you spoke about the other day. Alex? Alex. My yeah. Cousin, cause he's just my cousin. Mm -hmm. But now, but his, his mama, he was my first cousin, mm -hmm. but his mama, uh, his mama's dad and my dad are brothers, were brothers. Mm -hmm. So and that's why when they look at that, they say, well, I is going to be just like Wesley mm -hmm. when I was in the world. Mm -hmm. Or they, they may look at it, well, you're going to be like your uncle, I mean, your cousin now, Wesley, because he's a minister. But that's not, that's not so. Mm -hmm. and that's, so. that's why some people look at family members because you can't them, you just like them. Not all the time. Mm -hmm. Not all the time. You don't really, some of them don't, don't pick up the same attitude as other family right. members do. Be like me and my brother, my four brothers. We, all four of us was different. Mm -hmm. All four of us was different. And I, like one of the oldest ones, 
he wasn't a playboy, but you know he couldn't hold he could hold a job. But the next one couldn't hold a job, but he was the playboy. Mm. My twin, he couldn't hold a job, but I could. Yeah. At times. <laughs> See, at times. <laughs> but I, you know, but all of that, you know, he Leslie allowed us to fight, but I didn't mm -hmm. until I got older. You know, <laughs> until I got older and stuff. Like that. And that time I didn't like it, but we wasn't different. We wasn't the same. And that's what people look at. But actually, sometimes they do come out the same because depending on how you raise them mm -hmm. and how you discipline them. And they may come out the same. Amen. But I see here, but sometimes we do have the same spirit. But one, all of us did have one spirit, alcohol. Uh -huh. We did have that one spirit. I'm from the girls, all, all the, uh, my mother's six kids. Mm -hmm. And my, my two sisters and me and my twin, our dad was an alcoholic. Now, for us, my two older brothers' dad, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they became alcoholics too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if their spirit got on them from my dad because he had begun to raise them. But see, in all that, that's why, like you were saying, when things are not put in place like my pastor that trained me, the head senior pastor of that ministry, Willie, you have to get someone, in case something happened to you, assistant pastor. Yes. In case something happened to you, someone could take over for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll do it later on, I'll do it later on. But he never did it. Mm -hmm. Never did it. Then when he got sick and died, there was no one to take over his ministry. And his ministry died out. Because mm -hmm. his son-in-law already had a ministry up in Austin, Texas, Dallas, Texas. So he tried to work two ministries, but he couldn't. He couldn't do it back into, you know, tell him San Antonio and back up into Dallas and come back to San Antonio and go back to Dallas. He couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And it ended up finally divorcing his wife, his, his, his wife and everything, mm -hmm. you know, because I was too much, I guess it was too much pressure on him. So, but, still, but still, we cannot uh, uh, say everybody's going to be the same, but I see here that, that uh, Adonijah had the same spirit of Absalom. Absalom. Want to exalt themselves. They want to exalt. They want to take over. Mm -hmm. And you can't do it. You find people like that do want to take over things. When someone don't even appoint them, they appoint themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like some people appoint themselves as bishops, appoint themselves as a pastor, and not even don't even have a church. Yeah. And never even started a church, but they appoint themselves as pastors <laughs> or prophets or, or, or what is it, evangelists. Yeah. They burnt themselves there. And well, God have any done. Go ahead. Pastor Green and I talked for a while today when I was at work and uh he was telling me about the group that y'all had, you know, that yeah. things were going really great. And Galveston County they had like a minister almost in every city in Galveston County pretty yeah, much yeah, kinda yeah, you know, discuss issues and that type of thing. And then some of them got kind of power hungry and wanted to be over yeah. others, you know, and then it kinda kills the group when, when you got those that wanna it's a power struggle. I want to be a boss. I want to be a boss. Yeah. This and that. And so that's what he was telling me. When I was reason I was laughing because we just had that conversation today. You know, just the power struggle. You know, so and then that happens. You know, when people get <laughs> power hungry and yeah, they want to be in control yeah. of things. So, so that's one thing right here. Another thing is, is if y'all notice right there, um, it said uh, verse six. Now his father, King David, had never disciplined him at any time. Even by asking why you're doing that. So when we don't discipline our children or discipline others, if we're in leadership position, then things go awry. Things happen because there's no discipline. And, and those that individuals realize, oh, ain't nothing going to happen. I mean, we see that in school sometimes, too. You know, uh, he ain't going to do that. I mean, I'm gonna go, nothing's going to happen when they don't know that there's a consequence. Another thing is rules have to be in place when rules are in place and everybody knows what the rule is and everyone yes. knows what the consequence is yes. then you have less problems but when there are no real written rules and nothing is in place and, and nobody knows can i do this or can i can i not do this and nobody knows that they do it well i didn't know i wasn't supposed to do it there's it all kinds of problems so that's another thing with discipline and making sure things are planned and things are in order and things are in place then you would have less of these type of issues exactly that's just that's just like you guys have heard me say before when the new baby bread comes to my house it's different from his house mm -hmm. one day he was in such a great need and desire to jump on the couch because he gets to do that mm -hmm. he said grandma grandma can I please jump on your couch can I jump on your couch because he knew there wasn't a but he, would, he had to have it, you know, because he, he was at my house for too many hours without being able to jump on the couch. Yeah. 
Amen. But we have to have parameters in place and within our home, within the job, at church. They have to be parameters in place, you know, and if parameters are not in place and everyone does, doesn't know those rules or those parameters, then you're going to have problems. So. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say, the church. See, there's got to be rules and, and guidelines at the church, too. Yeah, because, absolutely. Yeah, because people will start doing things that is not right or off, get upset because they can't do it. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's got to be like, like I was telling my nephew the other day, because he's newly wed and everything, and uh, I said, look, uh, you and your wife are going to have to sit down and set guidelines for you. What y'all will do and what you won't do. Mm -hmm. What you will allow and what you won't allow. What you like and what you don't like. Y'all got to sit down and do this because if you don't, you're going to be an argument. Because something she's going to do you don't like and you don't, mm -hmm. you don't know. She don't know that you don't like and she won't continue to do it. Mm -hmm. Or something you do. So there's got to be guidelines. That we have, you know, rules and regulations. In every uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. Because this church is, is a fellowship. Mm -hmm. relationship. And that's what it's got to be, even at the homes, wherever, in a job, because they got them on the jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like at the cruise service, they got, they got new rules and regulations now. Mm -hmm. And if you don't buy it, buy them, you're out. That's what I was telling them, uh, uh, my sister the other day. Well, they said we go on this cruise, and, but we don't have to have no, show no vaccination. I said, yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. They got that in place. They had it on the news, and when I went to the training, they said, nobody who do not bring, they show that they've been vaccinated, cannot take the cruise. There will be this. You know, can't go, and that's what it really, and that's what it say. Same here. But David had to do because he did. He did promise by Sheba. Right, right. He did promise, but he didn't tell everybody, everybody else. That's right. Everybody didn't know. That's right. And sometimes, you know, you got to have tough conversations. You know, being a leader, when something goes wrong, you can't just let it go. You know, you got to have a tough conversation sometimes. King, first King, first King, first King, chapter one. Thanks. And we're going to verse 7, y'all, right now. So someone read uh, verses 7 through uh, uh, seven through 14. 7 through 14. There you go. 7 through 14? Yes, 1 Kings chapter 1, 7 through 14. That's what you said his name Adonijah. Adonijah. I get these names all mixed up. <laughs> Adonijah took Jobad, son of Zebul, and Abitar, the priest, into his confidence. And they agreed to help him become king. But Zadok, the priest, Benanesh, son of Zebedes, Nathan, the prophet, Sema, Rima, and David's personal bodyguard refused to support Ananias. Mm -hmm. Ananias went, where did he stop at? Oh, all the way to 14. 14. Ananias went to the, to the stone of Zebat, near the spring of Egro, where he sacrificed sheep, cattle, fatted calves. He invited all his brothers, the other sons of King David, and all the raw officials of Judah. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet or Bethes, or the king's bodyguard, or his brother Solomon. Then Nathan went to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, and asked her, Have you heard that Haggis, the son of Abijah, has made himself king, and our lord David doesn't even know about it? If you want to save your own life, and the life of your son Solomon, follow my advice. Go at once to King David and say to him, My lord, the king, didn't you make a vow and say to me, Your son Solomon will surely be the next king and will sit on my throne? Why then has Abishad become king? And, when, and while you are still talking with him, I will come and confirm everything you have said. Amen. All right. So Ananijah is just going to take over. I'm just, I'm just going to be king. <laughs> I'm going to make it happen, and I'm going to invite only the people I want to invite. I'm not going to invite or ask anybody else that's not on my side to join. But I'm not also not going to go to God to see if this is what God wants me to do. But I'm going to still sacrifice some cattle. Uh -oh. yeah, I'm gonna still, it's going to be all right because uh, if I didn't go to God, I'm still sacrifice. Maybe he'll let me go, you know, even though he didn't tell me to do it. No. No, you can sacrifice what you want to sacrifice. If God didn't have that for you, if God didn't appoint you to that, 
then you can't just go make it happen. Right. You can't make it happen. So that's a that's a, a message right there. And then we're gonna see he's gonna invite only the people he want to invite to his little celebration too. Amen. But God is still not in it. You should have you should have consulted the Lord first before you yeah. did anything. And God will when you consult the Lord on anything, and He will reveal to you, tell you, no, this is not for you. I got something else for you. And then you'll you'll hear what the Lord has to say about it. But when you go and act out on your own, then you're gonna have problems, and He's gonna have problems. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Yeah. That's what a lot of still people do today in our time. Act on their own. Mm -hmm. And not consult no one about it. Or even I'm talking in jobs or in churches and homes. And as a matter of fact, if you, you go back to the to the family home, some kids act out and that's why some of them get whooping. Mm -hmm. Because they know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Instead of asking their parents or something like this. Because yeah, I know you know, I was a child and I did some things too that I know I wasn't supposed to do, but I did it anyway. And my mother found out. And she said, now, you know you're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think you mind. Yes, I do mind. But then other day, you find people that do that. And they like their, they like their own little groups. Mm -hmm. Their own little groups. Mm -hmm. Now you can't be a part of this. This mm -hmm. is just us. You find people like that today. Mm -hmm. That's right. You see, you see some people in politics like that too. Yes. Yeah, yes. invite their own little groups. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. they right, have their own little harem uh, yeah. about, yeah. You know, around them. You know, where they go. But just because you got who you want doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Right. Amen. All right. Anybody else want to add anything? Yeah. Even in the church, you know, you have like what we would call cliques. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so mm -hmm. we will only invite those that will agree with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why are you going to invite me if I'm going to say what you're doing is wrong? Mm -hmm. So I don't want you. I want the people that will say, yes, what That's you're right. doing is right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that is what he had in mind is that I need to be made king and, and what I'm doing here, it got to be about me. Yeah. So I don't want anyone to come and say, well, what you're doing is wrong. Of course they do. And we have that all the time. Yeah, I mean, starting from the head down, mm -hmm. especially a lot of ministers would tell you, um, you know, funny because one lady was telling me about two weeks ago that there is this pastor she said when he goes to preach he could preach a preaching and he could teach a teaching and he knows the word but his lifestyle is something else mm -hmm. All right. and so he would tell his congregation and I, I, I literally asked her about two or three times if that is true but she said he would tell his congregation, do as I say, but not as I do. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. And she said, yes. He would tell the congregation, do as I say and not as I do. And we would find it all over where people are in position. And what they do is they try to bring the people that they want around them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Only those that will say, go ahead and do it. We'll support you. Whatever you do, go ahead and do yeah. it. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, it's, it's happening everywhere. But uh, we got to go to God in everything that we do. You know, we, we um, if he would have gone to God, God would have fixed the situation and let him know, no, this is for Solomon. I have something else for you. You know, so um, we have to go to God. Even though it's something that we want and we feel like, this is for me, I should do it. It's, I'm, I'm, I got, I've been trained. I've I got the intellect. i got the knowledge to do this, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that it's for you. God may have been giving you that knowledge to help somebody else yes. get that position. You know, so, amen. I want to take mm -hmm. an example in the Bible. Uh, 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 what did these two boys name? Abraham's uh, Isaac, Isaac and, uh, and Ishmael. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, because Isaac was the worst, oh, yeah, yeah. worst right, but, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, God still blessed Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Still blessed him. But they still had to stay in the will of God. Still had to obey God's word. Now, Hagar ran off with Ishmael. But yeah. God told him, you know, when told him, oh, said, I ain't you told him, no, you're going to be blessed too. Mm -hmm. You're going to be blessed too. But she, I think, uh, she did make fun of, of uh, Sarah. Mm -hmm. And that was wrong for her doing that. Yeah. But God still blessed, blessed the other son of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And that's what we got to realize. You know, don't try to exalt ourselves, uh, overthrow someone else, or take someone else's position. This, like, this comes out God, mm -hmm. and God still will bless us. Amen, amen. Good point, good point. All right, anybody else want to have anything on that? 
Okay, so we're at verse 15. Yeah, what? It was also uh, quite interesting that he didn't invite Nathan the prophet. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, no. Because he know he's going to tell him. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He's going to bring He's going to tell you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Still not going to invite him. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, good point, good point. All right, so someone read 15 through 21. So Bathsheba went into the king's bedroom. He was very old now, and Abisha was, taught, was taking care of him. Bathsheba bowed down before the king. What can I do for you? he asked her. She replied, My lord, you made a vow before the Lord your God when you said to me, Your son Solomon will surely be the next king and will sit on my throne. But instead, Adonijah, Adonijah has made himself king. And my lord the king does not even know about it. Mm. He has sacrificed many cattle, fatted calves, and sheep. And he has invited all the king's sons to attend the celebration. He also invited Abaditar, the priest, and Joab, the commander of the army. But he did not... But he did not invite your servant Solomon. And now, my lord, the king, all Israel is waiting for you to announce who will become king after you. If you do not act, my son Solomon and I will be treated as criminals. <laughs> That's a strong word. <laughs> as, yeah, as criminals as soon as my lord, the king, has died. Amen. That is up to 21? Yeah, right there. Okay. Right there. All right, boy, this is, man. He's trying to invite just the people he wants, once again, to come to the celebration, but he didn't invite Solomon. He wanted the people that he wanted. Um, mm -hmm. And then we see Joab also. Joab shows up again. Y'all remember Joab? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Joab is showing up again, but Joab is going to have some issues <laughs> coming up too. Uh, and he didn't invite Nathan. He didn't invite the Nathan the prophet. Uh, I was looking for another spot. Uh, okay, anybody else want to have anything else to add on that part? I want to just say quickly that we continuously see in ancient time and still in this present time and today's time that people will take advantage of you when you're down. Yeah. People will take advantage of you when you're weak, when you're not paying attention to what's going oh, on. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Like, right. who we're speaking of now, King Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun, and that mm -hmm. we should also keep in our for forefront today. Mm -hmm. I mean, here it is, his father is ill almost to death, and he's pulling all kinds of stunts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then at the same time, he... Uh, but she was concerned about Solomon and her life, and mm -hmm. yeah, to me, if you look at the way they treated women and those that they didn't like, I can clearly see them being put in, put in some kind of cave or oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. prison mm -hmm. yeah. and just put aside yeah. because yeah. he already know they're going to go up against him and to yeah. keep his keep mm -hmm. uh, him from having to even deal with the situation, just remove that woman yeah. and her son. Well, I tell you, since you said that he was just like Absalom, you know, yeah. Adonijah. Yeah. And so Adonijah was trying to kill David. Yeah, you know, exactly. trying to kill his own dad. So you know what? Exactly. Well, you know what? Ad, I'm sorry, Absalom was trying to kill David. Yeah. But you know what Adonijah would have done? Solomon would have been up out of there yeah, somewhere. Well, and Bathsheba, they would, they both of them. You know. Yeah. So yeah, that was a good point. Uh, one thing uh, Adonijah was doing. One thing, and a lot of us do this day. But I'm going back over a little bit over when I said exalt, exalt yourself. Adonijah violated a, a basic principle in Scripture. That we should let God exalt us and not exalt ourselves. Mm -hmm. See, that's one of the principles. Even, even you know, even in the world, mm -hmm. not in the spirit, but in the world, you, you have to let someone exalt you. Because if you exalt yourself, so they you, you going they're gonna bring you back down. Mm -hmm. I think he was saying like Pastor Green was telling you today. Right. That right. that's where we were, because a lot of them want to be exalted, want to do this, but they fail. Yeah, me and him are the only ones still standing. That's what he said. He said yeah, that. They yeah. fail. Because they wanted to dissolve themselves and wanted you know call themselves this and call themselves that. Titles, titles. Yeah, <laughs> but see they got to understand it. God, when God already set His word, set principles in place, mm -hmm. 
has already been set in place. And if you violate that, you violate the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good point. Good point. All right, y'all. This is some lesson. God is just, just speaking to us through this. Uh, what did you leave off at? 21? 21. 21. Okay. So someone did, uh, read 22 through 27. While she was still speaking with the king, Nathan the prophet arrived. The king's officials told him, Nathan the prophet is here to see you. Nathan went in and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. Nathan asked, My lord, the king, have, the king, have you decided that I was... What that boy name is? Adonijah. 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 <laughs> Adonijah will be the next king and that he will sit on your throne. Today he has sacrificed many cows, fatted, calves, and sheep, and sheep, and he had invited all the king's sons to attend the celebration. He also invited the commander of the army and Abishar, the priest. Where you want to stop at? Uh, all the way to 27. Okay. They are feasting and drinking with him and shouting, Long live the king, Abishai. But he did not invite me or Zodak, the priest of Benel, or your servant Solomon. Has my lord, the king, really done this without letting any of the officials know who should be the next king? Amen. King David responded, Call Bathsheba. So she came back in and stood before the king. Amen. All right. Y'all, you see everything that's happening. Nathan had already planned it that way. He had already told Bathsheba what to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to tell her first, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to come in. Yeah. That's someone with wisdom. Right. Nathan is a man of God with wisdom. we got to surround ourselves with people, okay. men and women of God with wisdom, mm -hmm. amen, to give us sound advice. This was That was yeah. sound counsel. Because yeah. she could have went in any other kind of way, and David could have been like, no, uh-uh. No, you know, it could have gone a different way, you know, yeah. but mm -hmm. listening to someone with wisdom, and that's that's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. I think the um, Proverbs 16 and 2, uh, in the multitude of counsel, in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. I, it's something it's Proverbs 16 or something, I think. But in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. Yeah. So when you are surrounded by men and women of God, and there's a multitude, there's safety. Mm -hmm. And people are there, God is speaking through them to give you some advice on something. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. that's that's just something I got from that. Also. I want to I want to share this story. I don't think old Faye will mind me telling it. Mm -hmm. She she was she she woke up this morning and she said I was just tossing all night. I couldn't I didn't go to sleep till almost two o'clock. And she began to tell my story. Well, the lady she worked for, well, she takes the lady to the stove, go take the lady to pick up her medicine. She took the lady to the emergency room the other day, and then the lady keeps saying, "Well, I need to go here and I need to go there." And I don't think I want to go back over there. I said, what do you mean you don't want to go back? Because the lady, she's playing tricks. I said, okay, what do you mean playing tricks? She would get me to take her here and get me to take her there. I said, what do the rules say? What did your, job, the lady, your boss lady say? She said, I'm not supposed to take her nowhere. I go pick up her medicine or something. But I put, well, that's what you do. You don't have to be staying up all night struggling with that and not want to go to work. Just to tell her nicely, I can't take you nowhere. That's the rule. Mm -hmm. I can't take it no I say, furthermore, I used to tell her sisters and her nephews, I used to tell our people, when people call you and they're cussing you out on the phone, you still got the phone up to your ear. I say, you got power. Uh -huh. Put the phone down. Hang up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Simple as that. Right. I say, now you got power. You, it's your car. You work for, you're not working for her, you're working to help her. Mm -hmm. You work for these people and they tell you don't take it away, then you tell her. It's against the rule. Like I've been doing, being nice to you, just taking you, just being nice, but I can't continue to do it. Mm -hmm. I have to stop. Amen. I said, I said, furthermore, you have to believe with the word of God. Mm -hmm. She said, yeah, you're right. So she went today and told the lady, we, I've been taking you, I've been nice, but I can't continue to take you. I have to obey God. Uh -huh. I have to obey the rules. And they said, oh, yeah, okay. Okay, see that? <laughs> All right. It worked out. Look at that. So, what, you know, like you were saying, wisdom. Yeah. And I believe that... Uh, 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 Bathsheba was known that uh, Abishak was going to get rid of him or hurt him or put him in a dungeon or something because their life was in danger and she couldn't think. Mm -hmm. And there was Nathan there. Nathan. That's why you said, yeah. surround, you, surround yourself with people who don't fear 
that that quick or get nervous that quick or with wisdom. That has wisdom. And matter of fact, if you're not around people with wisdom, that's when you call on God. Amen. All right. You call on God. And God either going to send someone to you or he's going to speak into your spirit. And you know exactly what you do. Amen. That's good, y'all. That's good. Anybody else want to add? You know, I look at how Bathsheba, she did not go into David with an attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She went to him humbly, humbly and, you know, she addressed him as my Lord the King. Yeah. Mm. And she played her story out as Nathan told her. Yes. And had it not been as you were saying, Pastor, if she had gone in a different mm. way, with a mm -hmm. different spirit, yeah. mm -hmm. the results might have been different. Yes. And we got to be very careful with the spirit that we approach people with. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because in our approach, even though what I'm coming to say to you is right, but if my approach, even like what we spoke about last week, if my approach is not right, the whole thing can go sour. Mm -hmm. But when we humble ourselves, look at what God can do for us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is what he wants from us. And the thing about the wisdom is, that is another thing because a lot of people, they don't want to walk in godly wisdom. Yeah. When I say they don't want to walk in godly wisdom, and, and forgive me for looking at it from the top. Because as being in, in, in leadership position for years, I mean, I've dealt with all kind of people. Mm -hmm. Archie Bishop and Bishop, <laughs> and uh, I'm serious, <laughs> and apostles, and, 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 and doctors, and, and pastors. And, and the thing about it is that sometimes you find that the little man, the congregation, are more humble. Than some of these people. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Because they have a chip on their shoulders yes. and they think that they have already arrived. Yes. And who is running the. You know, one thing I've always said to myself, and from time to time maybe speaking and I may say it to somebody else, but anytime I'm sitting in a ministry and the pastor, the apostle, the whoever that is at the top of the ministry, start to speak about his or her church and this is my church oh, and I can do yeah. what I know that it's time to oh, yeah. take my shoes off and run uh -huh, that's right. Get it up. because it's not your church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's God's church right. and God is just allowing you, Thank you to lead his people he has given that to you mm -hmm. and we gotta be so careful with the spirit that we approach people. Because if you're at the top and I can't actually maybe do something to you or so, I promise you do. I may not want to do it because I know my father is going to get you. Mm -hmm. And before I have to do or say, and then I gotta bite my fingernails and go back and say, oh, I'm so sorry, um, I'm, I'm, I, I should not have said that, please forgive me. So, let me let my father deal with you. Because mm -hmm. just as how you're up there, you can be brought down low. Yeah. yeah that's like uh, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. He got a great big fall because he put himself up too high. You know, we can't ever get to the point as pastor, ministers, leaders, that we are, are better than anyone, mm -hmm. uh, more intelligent than anyone, and nobody can tell me anything because I got it, like you just mentioned a minute ago. Mm -hmm. We, we can't ever get to that point. We should be able to listen. Do you notice when David listened to Gad and Nathan, mm -hmm. there were two prophets, he listened to them. Yes. You know, he was the king. He was over mm -hmm. everything. You know, I'm the king. But he humbled himself yeah, and man. listened to them, to the men and women of God. Mm -hmm. That's the way we have to, the attitude yes. we have to have also. You were going to say something? I was just going to say, even the confusion in the churches, because okay. um, even, I'm trying, trying not to hear it really. Even the confusion <laughs> in the churches. <laughs> <laughs> even the confusions in the churches when I'm asked to come and give a word like even I have some coming up engagement 
And one of the things that come in my mind is, do I do I get to go in the pool pit? Mm. I, I know. Oh, but, oh, oh, I mean, I have one this Friday. I'm like, do I do I do I, do I stay down there? Or do I get in the pool pit? Yeah. But what I do is, I take the humble road. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I, I said, should I ask the pastor? He's a nice man, but you know, I noticed that the men go up there and they be the ones sitting up. You know how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but you know, I'm humble that they asked me to give a word. So maybe they try to do something a little different. I said, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a whole yeah. lot of mm -hmm. stuff going on. Oh, yeah. So it yeah. makes me feel like you believe I can get the word, but we're gonna sit there and draw, draw a division on yeah. that. Christian politics. Hey, but yes. hey. That's a good, good point. Good point. Good, I want to uh, expand on what Mr. Karen was saying. But some people don't want to walk in wisdom. And it, it came to me today, either last night or today, that a lot of people, they claim to be saved and, and Christians, but they're not obedient mm -hmm. to the Word of God. They'll say hallelujah, but they, they don't want to be obedient. Mm -hmm. In other words, same thing. When you're not obedient, you cannot walk in wisdom. When you when you rebellion and not obedient, you cannot walk in wisdom. Amen. So in other words, still like you were saying too, uh, Minister Jolene, and I've, I learned this as principle. I learned years ago. When I, I go to visit to the church, I'm sitting in the back. I sit in the back, and they will call me up front. If they don't call me up front, I'm standing in the back. Mm -hmm. Even if I go to a minister somewhere, I'll sit in the back. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor Butch, come on the front. You sit over here. I said, okay. Now, me and my wife went to a, a, a service. We weren't ministering. We just went to a service. And I sit in the back. She said, no, I want to go to the front. Don't go to the front. <laughs> and we went to the front. And they said, no, you have to sit over here. <laughs> I said, that's why I've been down to yeah. The scripture even says, yeah. be called up. Don't yeah. go and sit in the front. Like you find a lot of them. I'm going to the front because I'm a bastard. Yeah. I'm a bishop. And then get up and say, he sees enough for you. Yeah. You're embarrassed. Mm -hmm. But that's the principle that I practice. I, I don't care where I go. I, even when I first started coming out, I was going to sit in the back. It's, it's, it's something in scripture, too, about yes. the people that mm -hmm. are given. And, yeah. 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 It's, 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 so, so that's why I really don't even act. I'm saying that that's the stuff that goes on in my head. Yeah. I always, I go that road. I don't go that road when mm -hmm. they, you know. But it's funny how it, it's, it can be divided. Yeah. Amen. You know, how it's, how, it's, how it's divided like that. It's like. And I think that's what Mr. Turner was saying with people who, who someone who think they have arrived and think it's because they up there, they can just do like they want. Mm -hmm. Mistreat people and uh, treat people the way they want them. And see, Which, and some people feel entitled to. You yeah. know, I, I'm well known. Everybody yeah. knows me. I should do this because I'm me. This is me, you know. And they feel entitled that everyone just has to bow down. But when we don't operate, first of all, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So yeah. if we fear the Lord, yeah. then we're going to do everything God tells us to Amen. do. Be humble, Amen. you know, uh, meek, you know, and, and respectful, and, you know, uh, don't be uh, uh, braggadocious or prideful, that type of thing. So when we're fearing the Lord, then that's the beginning of wisdom. But when we miss that part of fearing yes. the Lord and not acting, then we don't get the wisdom. Mm -hmm. So we have to do it. Everything is in, everything is in, in order. Amen. Everything is in order. So good yes. point, y'all. Just listening to, you know, you guys go back and forth about the wisdom and, you know, and you were talking about uh, when you're in a certain position, you know, govern yourself accordingly. I'm going to be honest. I'm always being transparent and just telling the truth and telling on myself. A lot of times I'll say to God, God, how many times am I going to come to you repenting? Mm -hmm. Repenting over the same. I said, but when I repented, I meant it in my heart. But I'm back knocking on the door again with something very similar. But what he tells me in my spirit, man, because you have not gotten to the point where you're perfect. You'll never be perfect. You will always come to me. That's why I'm here. But it is not to make me feel that it's, it's okay, but it's to, he's such a good father. You know, he's just such a good father. He works with each and every one of us individually because he know our weakness and he know what we lack in and what we lack in. So that's just a shout out to God for being a good, good father. I think it's God is. looks at the heart. None of us are going to be perfect. Yeah. God looks at the heart. David had, speaking of David, David had a repentant spirit. Yeah. And he, he was a man after God's own heart. So even though he messed up and he kept messing up, 
we're going to mess up and we're going to keep messing mm -hmm. up. But God sees our heart. Lord, I don't want to mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to keep doing this thing. Please help me, Lord. Please help me with this. And you ask for forgiveness and you repent and you slide off into some Father God. Please, I'm, you know, he knows your heart as you're trying. But he also knows others' hearts like, yeah, I'm just going to keep saying this, Lord. I'm going to keep doing what I want to do. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. That's a whole different thing. But when you're caught in something and I'm trying, I'm struggling, I'm, Lord, I'm really trying. I'm really trying. He knows, you know. So God sees the heart. He knows we're going to mess up. He knows we're going to mess up. That's why I want to come to church. I need you to know, it. something is, something that um, I have thought about over and over. There are people that can do the same thing. Let me use myself. Let's say I have been doing something over and over. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily every day, not necessarily every month right, right. or so. And I have done it, let's say, for 15 years. And the Lord still forgiving me. Mm -hmm. Still sharing me with His grace. Mm -hmm. And Amen. guess what? Thank you, Lord. you go and you do it. <laughs> you only do it for two years. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God may say, that's enough. That, that's enough and we may wonder how can someone get away with uh, I don't know if get away is the right word no, but how you know for 15 years and somebody after two years the Lord said that's enough if you don't pull yourself together I'm going to do something about it mm -hmm. and that is where his sovereignty comes in mm -hmm. he has the right to do what he wants to yeah. do yeah, that's right. And he said that he will give mercy to those that he chooses to. Mm -hmm. And with all of that, we have to tell ourselves, it is good that we have the high priest that we can go yes. to. It is Amen. good that we have, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus Christ that we can run to, the advocate Interceder, mediator. that we can run to. Yes. And so we don't necessarily have to, we don't, just don't have to continue doing what we are doing. But we can go to him whenever we messed up. Mm -hmm. Whenever we messed up. And, and let me say this also, it's, uh, we can not, okay, I have a struggle that I may be struggling with. I can't get out of it myself. Thank it's only going right. to take God to help right. me get out of right. it. We, we right. have no strength to do it ourselves. And I was thinking that today, I, was, I don't know how I got on this, this, this thought, but uh, spirits. Like, say, for instance, I'm, if I'm an alcoholic, and that's a spirit. I can't mm -hmm. defeat that spirit by myself. You. And you mm -hmm. can't. You've mm -hmm. got to have the Holy Spirit to defeat right. that spirit. Right. Amen. So, getting out of a struggle or different things like that, we've got to have God. We've got to have God. Mm -hmm. because, what, mm -hmm. because even when you go and mess up, you don't even know that you're planning on going and mess up. Now, I'm not talking about those who plan on their day of doing right, whatever they right. want to do. Because some of the things that I may say to somebody, I didn't have the intention on mm -hmm. saying it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they pushed my button. And you fell in it. You fell into it. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. but, but at the same time, I need to, I need to have, um, what would I say? Let's go back to what y'all said, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I keep petitioning. I keep petitioning God. I keep asking. Lord, show me ahead of time. You know, mm -hmm. make me stronger. Make, make that button harder to push. Mm -hmm. Amen. But, I'm trying to put it in words without going too long. But in the same thing, what you're saying, you look David as an example. Like I said, David kept repenting. Although mm -hmm. he messed up many times, but he went, before, he went and consulted God and said, God, forgive me. Forgive mm -hmm. me. Forgive, mm -hmm. me. forgive mm -hmm. me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm just jumping here. At the end of this story, he, 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 none of that, what he did wrong, was mentioned. Mm -hmm. It was mentioned. That's like the, God forgives us our sin and throw it in the sea of forgiveness. Of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. See, but like he was saying, Mr. Karen, like this person was doing something. Over and over, maybe not every month, every year, but then again, as we, if we, I'm talking about a believer now, not those who are sin, not those who, who happen to see, that's consequences that's going to come. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's come to say, yes. Like if I was yes. to pick, pick up drinking again, if I was to pick up drinking again, and I'm claiming to be a, a Christian, I pick up, that's going to be comfortable because my, my demeanor is going to change, my uh, 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 complexion is going to change. My attitude is going to change. Health. And health, all that is going to change. And that's going to be so part of the consequences because I chose not to ask forgiveness or go to God and ask forgiveness mm -hmm. and help me with this. And that's why a lot of them, you know, they, they go say forgive me, but 
they're not ready to let go. Because you take uh, Ananias, his spirit, he had a choice not to do that or no, but he chose to do it, mm -hmm. to exalt himself. He could have just said, say, God, I know what happened to my brother Absalom, how he was defeated. Lord, help me. I, I want to, you know, mm -hmm. serve you. But he didn't do that. He wanted to exalt, and that's where you find a lot of people trying to exalt themselves, and, and, they, and the consequences is coming, because consequences are going to come. They're not going to get away with it, as you said. Well, that, we just found out about consequences for uh, the wrong actions last week with Sam, with uh, with David. Yeah. Second Samuel chapter twenty four, when he counted the people, yes. he still had a consequence. You know, God gave him choices. Yeah. Which one? But he had a consequence. Yeah. Consequence. yeah. Amen. All right, y'all. Anything else? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try to finish it off, y'all. Two week fifty two. All right. So I think you left off at twenty seven. I think it's fifty two. I'm gonna try to finish it off. Okay. Um, uh, I, I left off at. Uh, he started. He did twenty eight. Yeah. 